Hey everybody, this is Brian and welcome to the ninth Yee tutorial. Um, Today is going to be a pretty simple tutorial, but it's actually a very important one. We're going to talk about static pages. So if you go to www.voidrealms.com, my website, you'll see the front page is actually pretty plain. I mean, there's some some links and some images and stuff, but it doesn't really dynamically generate as opposed to, say, like tutorials, which is constantly changing. You know, it's obviously pulling this out of a database. So if you're running a website and you've got a lot of hits, I mean, maybe not even a lot of hits, maybe you're paying per CPU cycle or disk usage, you don't want to re-render this page. Like if you've got some PHP in here that's doing some stuff, you don't want to re-render this every time somebody requests it because it's a complete waste of the computer's time. Um, on your little desktop, it's not a big deal, but when you throw it on a server and you get hundreds of thousands of people, it becomes a big deal pretty fast. So how do you make a static page? First off, it's actually very simple. It's so ridiculously simple, you're not going to believe your eyes. Go to Protected, Views, and Site, and you'll see a subfolder called Pages, and in there you'll see about.php. Open that up and you're going to see, well, it looks like a normal ye view, and well, you'd be right. It is a normal ye view. There's really nothing you have to do here other than just put it in the Pages subfolder. Now, when you look at this, you can also see there is PHP, and we're calling some Yi objects in here, like the Yi app, something we haven't covered yet. That's the global object for Yi. Um, so you, the point I'm trying to make here is you can actually put Yi objects and PHP code in these static files. They're rendered initially, and then somebody, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they're re-rendered like once an hour or once every 24 hours, or detects a change. Or maybe aliens just come out of the sky and render it magically. I don't remember. I should probably research that. <laughs> Anyways, so point being, this is rendered and it's cached on the disk, so it's not re-rendered every single page request. So when you go out to your little website that we've been working on here and you click About, notice how the route changes to something different. It's the controller, is site, and then we're saying the action is page. Now, notice how the action is page. Let's actually jump out to the site controller here. You can see, well we can scroll through this whole thing, but you can see down here on the left our actions are contact, error, index, login, logout, and actions. Well, we actually don't have a page, so what's it doing here? It automatically knows because of this and view equals about. So what we're doing is we're saying take this controller render a static view and this is the view we want to render about so it's pretty much the same principle it's just it's skipping over the whole action and it's just rendering a static page so if we wanted to we could actually just you know make a new one here well let's not call it test let's call it stat static test that php i cannot type today there was a uh, new vulnerability that came out called uh, Shell Shock, which if you've ever used like a, well, I'm using Ubuntu right now, but anything that uses Bash, it's this really nasty little bug that you can get a remote shell and actually execute code. And my eyes are, are like bleeding because I've been patching servers all day. So static test. And we're just gonna say, yay. Now, we made our static view, as it's called, and we're not even going to modify the site controller. Now, normally you would need an action to do the render and then render the view, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to go back here and we're going to say hmm, dum dum dum, was not found. What did I do wrong here? Ah, yes, see it's lowercase, case sensitive here. So if we do this, ah, yes. Yay, there we go. So <laughs> sorry about the mistake at the end there, but that's all for this tutorial. Um, really what you need to take out of this is that static pages will save you a lot of money if you're on a third-party host and you have a lot of content that never changes.